UFP, the United Federation of Podcasts. Stand by to receive our transmission. You're listening to Star Trek Weekly News. I'm Tony Robinson. In this week's news, we compare Spock to Spock. Anthony Rapp has a few words. All this and more, coming right up. It seems Discovery's Spock will differ from the classic Nimoy take. And according to Roger Cheng at CNET.com, it's more than the beard. It only takes a split second to see what sets apart Star Trek's Discovery Spock from Leonard Nimoy's classic take on the original series. That's scruffy facial hair. Both Nimoy and Zachary Quinto, who played Spock in the new movies, largely played the character as the clean-cut logical science officer for the Enterprise, that's not what we'll get from Discovery Spock when it's played by Ethan Peck. This is the unwritten chapter of a period of time for Spock that could only be told on this season of Star Trek Discovery. Alex Kurtzman, co-executive producer and showrunner for the show, said in an interview last October, The embrace of elements like Spock, Captain Christopher Pike and the Starship Enterprise underscores Discovery's deeper dive into the Star Trek canon. While the first season of the show danced around bits of well-trodden Star Trek lore, Discovery seems unafraid to go all in on the legacy aspects in the upcoming season, which starts January 17. And although Kurtzman said the show will respect the canon, it's clear that this Spock won't be the one you know. Though Kurtzman confirmed that Spock would appear in the second season of Discovery back in July during San Diego Comic-Con, fans didn't get to glimpse the new take on the famed Vulcan until October in a trailer released for New York Comic-Con. The reaction in the crowd was noticeable, with audible gasps heard when the grizzled Spock first appeared on screen at the Madison Square Garden Theatre. The beard is an external manifestation of his dishevelment, Peck said in an interview. The actor, grandson of Gregory Peck, with credits like the television adaptation of Ten Things I Hate About You and the voicing of characters in the Halo video game franchise, says his swings between emotion and logic are more dramatic than Nimoy's more subtle performance. He's Spock before Spock, Peck said adding that you'll see glimpses of Nimoy's performance here and there. He called the original series Spock the light at the end of the tunnel, the benchmark. Kurtzman warned that this Spock has yet to evolve into the character we see on TOS, so viewers shouldn't rush to judgment. Peck, for his part, is bracing for the attention and scrutiny that comes from playing such an iconic character. It'll be really polarising, he said. My strategy is to do my absolute best, I'm pouring my heart and soul into this. One of the central mysteries left dangling from the first season was the nature of the relationship between Seneca Martin-Green's Michael Burnham and Spock. Burnham was adopted by Sarek, Spock's father, yet she's never mentioned in TOS. That continuity gap left fans scratching their heads. Spock isn't just a one-off guest star in the upcoming season. Both Peck and Green say the show will fully explore their complicated relationship. We delve very deeply into it and we don't leave any stones unturned. Kurtzman vows he'll get answers about why Burnham is never mentioned in the previous show. Don't have to mention it, but Discovery returns on January 17. CBS All Access, 
and Netflix. I hope. That's all I got. Incoming transmission. Well, not long now till January 17, because guess what happens on that day? Yes, Star Trek Discovery Season 2 airs. And the actor Anthony Rapp is feeling very confident about the new season. Anthony, who plays Lieutenant Commander Paul Stamets, spoke in a new promo about how it feels returning for Discovery's second season. You know, we really we really became a family in season one. So we're going to be ready, sir. Bring the drive online and then we'll couple the shows to me. But we were doing all of our work in a kind of, not a void exactly, but in our little bubble before the rest of the world got to really know what we were doing. So we had already forged that bond and now that we got to share it, it's in a way it kind of made it even stronger. Everything just feels sort of more settled and grounded and uh, confident, I guess. He wasn't the only one who had an opinion. Sonika Martin-Green, who plays Commander Michael Burnham, shared a similar sentiment. You know, we were so excited to come back for season two. And action! Scan show 203 crew members aboard. The vessel's entire complement is alive. I think I missed the people, you know, more than anything um, from being on set. You know, we were all so very close. And we've come so far so quickly. Okay. Multi layered rainbow, right? Multi layered rainbow. Two, three. Right, so it's one. Season one was such a whirlwind, and we gained so much experiential knowledge. So we we had all of that coming into it, and we knew that we were more firmly planted on the ground. We had such a better understanding of who we are, what we're doing, where we live. And action! And so we were just over the moon about coming back. It's time to get back. You know, I miss everybody. Sonika also mentioned the big mystery at the heart of the show's second season, which reunites Burnham with her foster brother Spock, played by Ethan Peck. The Red Angel appears to Michael Burnham at a very, very critical moment, she said. You can see from the trailer that we just released that it looks like a life or death moment. And I see this angel and I say that it gives me comfort and lets me know that everything is going to be okay. And then what I find out later is that Spock has also seen the Red Angel, but when he was a child. And so it's a huge mystery, and it's one of the big themes of Season 2. Finding out what this angel is, where this angel came from, what it wants and what it needs, and what is it doing. All those questions. Well, I'm excited to find out what happens in Discovery Season 2. I'm sure you guys are too. Well, January 17, it's not that far away. That report was filed by Jamie Lovett over on comicbook.com. Just in from the Federation News and Weather Service, galactic monitoring beacons have recorded a snowman-shaped asteroid heading towards Earth. It is four million miles away, but it could be the herald of a new cosmic winter or just a fluke. Before we leave you today, let me remind you that you can contact us with your thoughts on email using contact at ufp.earth. You can also download any of our shows from iTunes, Spreaker, SoundCloud or YouTube. Just search for United Federation of Podcasts. And you can help keep us running each week by donating to the cause through Patreon too. I'd like to thank Brandon Mutala. Zachary Moore and Ken Tripp are executive producers and founders for putting together a great network. I'm Tony Robinson. This is Star Trek Weekly News. Tune in next week for more news and views from the world of Star Trek. Live long and prosper. This has been a production of MTMR Media Works.